Today we're going to show you how to correctly set up your spray gun for optimum performance, efficiency and atomization. The first thing you want to do is familiarize yourself with your spray gun and its various adjustments. In this case we are looking at the Burish GTR 500 LVLP gravity feed spray gun. Most spray guns will have similar adjustments but may be located in different areas of the spray gun. There are three adjustments on this particular gun which we will now explain in further detail. In this instance we have the fluid adjustment which will adjust the amount of paint that the spray gun will allow through the fluid tip. We normally recommend closing this completely by turning the adjuster clockwise all the way until it stops, then turning it back out three full turns. This is a good setting to start with and then you can adjust this when painting depending on your requirements. If you find you're not getting enough material out the gun, simply turn the adjuster another full turn anti-clockwise. If you're getting too much and are experiencing paint runs, you can close the adjuster a bit by turning it clockwise. Note that how this adjustment actually works is simply to limit the maximum point that you can pull the trigger to. Here we have the air pressure adjustment on the GTR 500. In this instance, fully open is when the tab is in the middle or 12 o'clock position. This will allow maximum air through the gun. Turning it either clockwise or anti-clockwise from the middle position will throttle the air pressure down. This is the fan adjustment on the spray gun. Most of the time we will want this to be fully open which is achieved by turning the knob anti-clockwise until it stops. This will create the largest spray fan achievable with this gun and is how you will want it to be set in most instances. Turning the adjuster clockwise will make the fan size smaller. Generally you will want to close off the fluid adjustment a fair amount if you want a smaller fan pattern as the paint will tend to build up too much in a small surface area causing runs. The trigger allows you to control the flow of paint out of the gun. The GTR 500 has a two stage trigger. If you press down on the trigger gently until you feel resistance it will only let air out of the air cap. This is handy for blowing dust off panels prior to spraying as well as allowing you to set up the air pressure to the spray gun accurately without wasting paint. If you press a little harder on the trigger it will start to release paint out of the fluid tip and into the air cap to allow it to atomize and create a mist. In order to accurately set up the correct air pressure to the spray gun we would highly recommend that you have a mini regulator with gauge fitted to the spray gun. The reason for this is that the pressure on the compressor regulator is not an accurate reflection of the pressure that the spray gun is getting when the trigger is depressed. There are two air pressure scenarios that are important here, namely static pressure and working pressure. Static pressure is the pressure which you will see on the gauges when there is no work taking place and the trigger on the spray gun is not depressed. Working pressure is the pressure measured on the gauges when you depress the trigger on the spray gun. As you are opening the air circuit to atmosphere, there is a resultant drop in the static pressure as the air escapes from the spray gun. The difference can be anywhere from 10 to 60 percent depending on a multitude of factors such as airline length, airline diameter, quick connect fittings being used and regulator flow rates. In order to set up the spray gun correctly we need to make some adjustments so that when you depress the trigger the working pressure measures what the spray gun manufacturer recommends. In this instance for the GTR 500 we need a working pressure of 2 bar or 29 psi. We'll now show you how this is done. If your spray gun has a pressure adjustment make sure it's fully open for maximum flow. In the case of the GTR 500 you'll want the tab to be at the 12 o'clock middle position. Start the air compressor and allow it to completely fill until it reaches its final pressure and switches off. The next step will be to open the mini gun regulator completely to allow maximum flow. In this instance we will turn the adjuster anti-clockwise all the way until it stops. We are adjusting the pressure on a wall mounted regulator in this instance but the same can be achieved on the regulator fitted to the air compressor if you do not have a wall mounted unit. 
start off by closing the air supply regulator until the gauge shows zero PSI, achieved in this instance by turning the adjuster anti-clockwise. Now you will press the trigger gently on the spray gun until you start to feel resistance. This is the first stage of the trigger function, only allowing air through the air cap. Keep the trigger depressed like this while simultaneously adjusting the air supply regulator. On this regulator, we need to keep turning the adjuster clockwise to increase the working pressure. Now keep an eye on the gauge on the mini regulator fitted to the spray gun and keep adjusting your supply pressure until the gauge on the gun shows 2 bar or 29 psi. Once it does, you can release the trigger and press it again and verify that the pressure changes quickly from its static pressure to the desired working pressure, 29 psi or 2 bar in this case. The reason we adjust the supply pressure up from 0 psi and not set it to maximum is that we want to avoid fluctuations which can be experienced when the compressor restarts as well as to make sure that the gun isn't getting too much static air pressure. This will ensure you do not damage any of the internal seals as well as eliminate the tendency for the gun to kick back when you initially press the trigger. If the supply pressure is too high and the gun kicks back when you press the trigger, you can also get variances in the paint atomization when you initially depress the trigger. You've now successfully set your working pressure on your spray gun correctly. Every time you depress the trigger, you can verify on the gun regulator gauge that you're getting your target working pressure. It's a good idea to keep an eye on this while spraying from time to time and make any adjustments if necessary. If you find you need less pressure through the gun in order to control overspray, for example, you can simply adjust the knob on the gun regulator whilst the trigger is depressed and lower the pressure easily. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider becoming a subscriber. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. All equipment featured in this video is available from www.gtair.co.uk.